Hey, welcome back everyone to all of our options traders. And normally we talk about options, but let's change the topic a little bit. Let's talk about bonds. A lot of talk in the markets lately about bonds because after all, rates are getting to the point where they might help you to solve your financial goals. Remember, that's always a basic tenet of risk management. Start with the risk-free rate. And if the risk-free rate solves the problem, there's no reason to take additional risk. Well, for many of you, the rates are to levels where that might solve your problems. However, there are a couple of big risks between two basic categories of bonds. There's a discount bond and a coupon bond. And I think a lot of traders are not aware of these risks. So if you're out shopping for bonds, let's go find out what these risks are. And before we do, as always, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps so much to promote the channel. So the first thing to remember about bond prices, remember bond prices move inversely with interest rates. And that just simply means interest rates down, bond prices up, interest rates up, bond prices down. Now the degree of this price movement depends on the type of bond. In other words, all bond prices will go up when interest rates drop, but some categories of bonds go up by larger percentages. And so the first category we want to look at is a discount bond. Now a discount bond typically is going to be like our zero coupon bond or the T-bills, but you can find zeros in other maturities. And the way that they work is this. Let's say that you have a 1000 face value that's called the par value and the bond will always pay this off at maturity regardless of the price that you pay. So let's say that the risk-free rate is 5%. Well, today's value of this bond is very easy to calculate. It's called the present value. So for example, let's say that you have a one year zero coupon bond or a T-bill and it's a 1000 face. What would you pay for it today? Well, you're simply going to take that 1000 face divided by one plus the interest rate or 1.05, and that comes up to 952.38. So in other words, if you were to deposit $952.38 into a bank paying 5%, you would end up with $1,000 in one year. But let's say that rates jump to 6%. Now what's it worth? Well, it's the same process. We take the 1,000 face divided by 1.06, and now it equals 943.40. So the point to see here is that when the interest rate increased from 5% to 6%, look what happened to the bonds price. It went from about 952 and change down to 943. Today's value must be less because if they both mature to a thousand bucks, the bond that pays the higher rate means that you must have invested less money. That's why you got a larger rate. And this is why a lot of times traders get this wrong. They say, oh, with a, with a higher rate that the price must be higher. No, that's wrong. Today's price must be lower. That's what's allowing you to earn the higher rate. Now we get the same type of effect by looking at time. So let's say that we have a one year bond. Again, as we found out, you would just simply take 1,000 divided by 1.05 or 95238. But if you have a five-year bond, interest rate still at 5%, now you're going to just divide by 1.05, divide by 1.05 again, you're going to do that five times. And mathematically, that's the same thing. On your calculator, you can just take 1.05 raised to the fifth. Mathematically, that's just taking 1.05 times 1.05, and you're doing that five times. So if we take 1,000 divided by that number, look at that. Now we drop to 783.53. So you would pay about 952 for a one-year bond at 5%, but you would pay about 783 for a five-year bond. And again, in five years, you would receive $1,000 and effectively your rate of return would be 5%. What if it were for 30 years? Now we're going to take the 1,000 face divided by 1.05 raised to the 30th power, and that knocks the bonds price all the way down to 231.38. So again, it looks like you're getting just an unbelievable deal. You're paying 231, 
and it's going to mature to a thousand. So it looks like you're going to be making money hand over fist. Well, but remember, you're waiting 30 years for that to happen. But the point to see is that, again, we can decrease the bond's price by either increasing the interest rate or by holding the interest rate constant and increasing the time. All right, so now that you have a basic idea of how a discount bond or a zero coupon bond works, what are some of the pros and cons? Well, again, let's use the risk-free rate of 5%. Well, one of the big benefits is that you absolutely will earn this stated rate if you hold to maturity. That's the kicker. However, if interest rates rise, discount bonds are going to be the most sensitive. And that's because when we are doing this present value calculation, that entire cash flow, that $1,000 face sits out there at maturity. And so the prices can fall the most. That's one of the cons about a discount bond, that if you have to get out early, you face tremendous interest rate risk. So you might have bought this 30-year zero thinking, wow, I got it for 231 bucks and I'm going to get 1000 bucks in 30 years. Well, but what if you have to get out after three or four years and interest rates rise? Now you're going to be taking the biggest hits because, again, they face the most interest rate risk. Now, of course, we could see the opposite. If interest rates drop, then those are going to get the biggest boost. So if you're going to speculate that interest rates are going to drop, then yeah, your longer dated zero coupon bonds are the place to play. But again, if you're trying to do it from an investment standpoint, you must understand that if you need to exit early and interest rates go against you, you face tremendous interest rate risk. So for instance, let's look at a 30 year zero at 5%. And the way that we figure it out, remember we're going to take the thousand dollar face at a thousand bucks, we're going to look at another one at 6%. So they both mature to a thousand bucks. So what are these worth today? Well, again, as we found out, we take 1,000 divided by 1.05 raised to the 30th, and that comes up to be 231.37. However, let's say that right on that same date, of course, this would be highly unlikely, but mathematically speaking, if they instantly jump to 6%, what happens to that bond's price? So we take 1,000 divided by 1.06 raised to the 30th, and look at that. That bond's price falls from 231 down to 174, a 25% hit. So here's a chart showing the 5% bond in blue across various years. So this is 30 years to maturity, 28 all the way down to zero. So the blue line is 5% and the red line is 6%. So what we're saying is that if rates jump by this one percentage point from five to 6% with 30 years to maturity, look at the big gap right there. That's that drop of 25% that we saw. And you can see even down here, 10 years later, 20 years until maturity, still a very big gap right there. So you can see that if you pay this price, whatever it is, that if we just draw a line straight over, so let's say maybe at about eight years later, 22 years till maturity, you might just get your money back if interest rates rise from five to 6%. You can see that that point right there lines up with the price that you paid. Well, that's a long time to wait just to get your money back. And remember, even though it looks like on paper that you got your money back, you didn't really because your money just sat there doing nothing over that time. So this is really the big risk of a zero coupon bond. All of those cash flows are sitting way out into the future, so they become the most sensitive to changes in interest rates. Now let's look at a second category of bond that is a coupon bond. So these are going to be things like your notes in your bonds. It's really kind of a matter of semantics, but if they talk about a T-bill, treasury bill, it's usually one year or less. If you look at notes, they're usually up to about 10 years, and then if you look at bonds, they're 10 to 30 years but they all behave the same. They're, they're a type of bond. But if it's a coupon bond, it pays periodic interest, usually every six months. 
But the way that we value these bonds is exactly the same. We're simply going to take the present value of all of the cash flows. So as a fairly simple example, let's look at a three-year coupon bond. Our risk-free rate is 5%, and therefore it pays $50 per year, or half of that, $25 every six months. So if you buy this bond, you're going to get a $25 check. It would just be automatically deposited into your brokerage account in six months. Six months later, you get another one and so on until you get to maturity in three years, at which time you get the thousand face back. But the bond math makes the assumption that you can reinvest the interest payments at the same rate. This is the big risk of a coupon bond. So in other words, the true yield, the yield that you think you're getting, is almost assuredly going to be less than the stated rate. So if you have this 5% bond, well, how are you going to reinvest these $25 checks at 5%? If you have to invest three years to get a 5% rate, how are you gonna put this into a money market that's paying the same rate? So you're just not going to be able to do that. And even if these payments, maybe you've got millions of dollars put into these bonds, you're getting very large checks. Well, who's to say that you can reinvest them at 5%? Rates might be falling. So that's the thing is you're never really sure that you're going to get, in this example, 5% with the coupon bond. Remember, that is absolutely true with the zero. If it's a 5% zero, you absolutely are going to get 5%. For this very reason, you don't have these little interim coupons being paid. So let's look at these cash flows for a coupon bond at 5%. The first cash payment we get, let's say in six months, is 25 bucks. Another six months later, or the second period, let's call it, we get another 25 bucks. The third payment is 25 bucks. Fourth payment is 25. The fifth is 25. And then the sixth period, in other words, three years from now, we receive our last $25 check, but we also get the $1,000 face back for a total of $1,025. So what are all of these cash flows worth today? Well, we just do exactly the same math. We take $25 divided by 1.05 and divided by whatever the time is. So if this is just six months from today, we would just divide it by a half a year. If we get a second 25 payment in one year, then we're simply going to take 25 divided by 1.05. The third payment, we're going to discount that one back as well. The fourth payment, we discount back. The fifth payment and the sixth payment. So as before, we can see that as we start going out in time, look at these values start to fall. And then right here, we see the 1,025 value today is 883.85. So if we add all of these up, these six payments right here comes up to exactly $1,000. But now let's say that rates rise to 6%. All of these cash flows now, watch what happens. Their values drop. So the bond is now worth 972.91 or down about 2.8%. Well, that's not really a huge risk considering that rates have risen from 5 to 6%. And the reason that they're not as sensitive, these coupon bonds, to changes in interest rates is because of these cash flows that are what I'm calling the interim cash flows. They're cash flows that you're getting prior to maturity. And they tend to dampen this effect. See, with a zero coupon bond, all of your cash flows are sitting out here way out into the future. So they get the biggest magnification effect when they are taking the present values. But because we get these coupon payments along the way, these coupon bonds are not as sensitive to changes in interest rates. So the coupon bond, pros and cons, most likely that you won't earn the stated interest rate. And again, the reason is that the bond math assumes that you are able to reinvest, in those examples, those $25 coupon payments at that 5% rate. And that is highly unlikely. So even though you've got a 5% bond and you think you're earning 5% on your money over the next three years, you're really not. It's going to be something less than that. 
On the good side, these coupon payments dampen the risk of rising interest rates. And again, that makes it so that coupon bonds aren't as sensitive to changes in rates. So if for some reason that you need to sell early, you won't face as much price risk. So you simply have to ask, what's more important to you? Is it about getting, in this example, the 5% or the 6%? And if that's really what you need to meet that goal, then you're probably going to have to go with a zero coupon bond. On the other hand, if you're saying, well, 5% or something close to it will help me to meet my goals, but yeah, I can see a possibility where I might need to sell early. In those cases, you might want to lean towards a coupon bond. So we can look here, what this graph is showing is the blue curve is a coupon bond. Here's with 30 years to maturity, 28 and so on. And the red one is a zero. So what we're showing is that we are rising from 5% to 6%. So if you have a 30 year coupon bond, you can see that you're gonna lose, looks like maybe about 12 or 13%. But if you have a 30 year zero, and rates rise from 5 to 6%, as we saw, you're going to be down about 25%. See, if you come in here 10 years later, you've got to bail, and rates have risen from 5 to 6%, yeah, you might be down about 11% on that coupon bond, but if you're on that zero, you're more like about 16 17%. And then, of course, this gap starts to narrow as we get closer and closer to maturity. So if you're investing in a two-year bond or a four-year bond, these price risks aren't going to be all that great unless for some reason you get a really big increase in these interest rates. But if you're trying to lock in a long-term interest rate, especially out here, 30 years or 20 years, you've got to be real careful and understand just how sensitive a zero coupon bond is to changes in rising rates. So in summary, if the rate of return is the most important, zero coupon bonds may be your best bet. But you face the biggest price risk if you must exit early, if you need to sell. Now again, remember, if interest rates fall, yes, you're gonna get this windfall, but that's not a risk. The risk is that the rates rise and you had to sell early. On the other hand, coupon bonds will likely fall short of their stated interest rate, and that's again because the math assumes that you are able to reinvest those coupon payments at the same yield to maturity, which is virtually never going to happen. But the good news is that coupon bonds are not as sensitive if interest rates rise. So if you need to sell early, you're not going to face the same price risk. So those are really the main risks that I find that traders overlook when they're trying to make decisions between a zero coupon bond or a coupon bond. So I hope that helps you to make decisions if you are shopping for bonds. And of course, we can always use options to hedge these risks as well. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about options, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.